Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about critical question one, how are sports injuries classified and managed? Uh, this is part four of the part four series, so this is the last last episode of this critical question. And today we'll be focusing on assessment of injuries. Um, so now we're just talking about injuries which happen on the field and this is when it's not fatal. So we're looking at toe taps. Now toe taps is a is a strategy, almost like a procedure, similar to RISA, but um, in RISA it's specific to soft tissue injuries. Toe taps, it's not really that specific to any type of injury, it's just generally any injury. So toe taps is an acronym, just like RISA, and it stands for Talk, Observe, Touch, active and passive transport as well as skills test. So I'll be going through every single component inside toe taps in this lesson. Additionally, we have another dot point which asks us to perform assessment procedures to determine the nature and extent of injury in simulated, simulated scenarios. What that really means is that you need to know a few examples. And um, in the sense of examples, you need to know when to use toe taps and how to actually use it. There is no actual um, content that I can give you for this dot point except for just uh, providing you with uh, examples and ways to tackle this question or this syllabus dot point. So let's start. Toe taps, as I said before, we've got talk, observe, touch, active and passive movement, as well as skills test. Um, so the first component, talk. Now it's just as simple as it sounds. When when you um, when a heart injury, heart, uh, when any type of injury occurs, the first thing you should do is talk. You should ask the athlete a few questions, like you know where does it hurt, how did that happen, did you get, did you hear anything when it happened, like a, a pop or a tear. Um, you know, just try and ask them questions. Make sure that they're conscious. Make sure that they they um know what happened to their their leg or arm or whatever has been injured, and make sure that you you know the full extent of the injury. That's the main aim of talk is to find out more about how the injury happened and what the injury is all about and what happened on the field to cause the injury. So um the the next part is observe. So we need to look for swelling, deformity, and change in color. So now you can just kind of stimulate this in your head. Um, if suppose I got hurt by being hit by a cricket ball, just like I've used in my last four vi four videos as an example. If I got hit and I fell down to the ground and had this, you know, my arm stopped moving. Um, you came over to me, you talked to me, and you said, you know, where does it hurt? How did it happen? Did you hear anything? And then, you know, everything. I, I answered all your questions. Then your next step is to look for whatever you possibly can which identifies this injury. So it could be swelling, it could be deformity, it could be. Change in color you can you can just simply observe what's actually happening um, near my injury or where the injury was to get a, a better idea of what the injury is all about and how it happened on the field step three is all about feeling around the injured area so it's touch this is the touch component of toe taps it means that we can feel around the injured area and we need to check for deformity heat swelling or tenderness so uh, when we check for this we just have to make sure that we look at the athlete's face and see any reactions um, when we're touching around his injury um, by doing this we can kind of have a, once more a better feel of what the injury is actually how severe the injury is and to what extent uh, treatment is needed and whether or not the person is actually allowed back on field so you need to also ask for something called the pain level. The pain level is basically just a, a little system which is like ranging from 1, the least pain, to 10, the most pain. And you ask him, how, how much pain are you feeling? And he'll tell you from 1 to 10, uh, and if it's a very high level, then you'd strongly advise not to put him back on field. That's just another component that you can use while uh, feeling the injured area. Uh, the next step is the active movement step. So uh, in the syllabus, it's actually, uh, yeah, there's active and passive movement. So are we going through active movement first and passive movement first? Uh, next, it's very simple. It's just a little change in between those two. So in active movement, you're actually asking the athlete himself or herself to to move the injured area. You're not doing anything and you're simply just once again observing but you're watching him or her move the injured area and you need to see how far they can actually move it. You need to make sure that uh, they can try and move it to the full range of motion and um, to make sure that if they can um, move it to the full range of motion you should uh, perform isometric contraction tests which are basically um, supposedly putting your hands out and making the person, the athlete, uh, push the toes as far as they can against your hand. Okay, so that's active movement. Active movement is when the athlete themselves uh, try and move the injured area. All you need to do while in the active movement stage is assess the range of motion in the affected joints. Affected joints. 
So um, next we have passive movement. Now, if you can imagine, passive movement is when uh, you don't, the athlete themselves doesn't move anything, but it's actually yourself who tries and goes to move it. Um, most likely, you, you use passive movement when the athlete themselves says they can't move it, and um, passive movement is just another way to figure out how far they can actually move the injured area. So if, if full range of movement is not present um, from the previous test, what we can do is that we can move the injured part ourselves and we can assess how far it can be moved. And while doing this, again, we can watch the athlete's face or whatever, the, the body language, to see what type of reaction they have as we move it. If it's very painful, obviously, they'll you know scream or they'll be uh, very tensed and that will give you a little indication of how far you can actually move it without any more pain. And lastly, we come to the step called skills. Now, skills is just as it sounds. Uh, if you did do PE in year 8 and year 9 and year 10, you might have uh, tested for skills, which included the beep test and the hand-eye coordination test, the agility test. Well, similarly in this, we're just using a variety of skill tests, um, and we're performing these variety of skill tests to check uh, if the athlete is actually ready for the field. And um, my personal recommendation is that when doing these skills tests and when writing about these skill tests and exams, you should always like um, try and mention that you, sh you can try and um, uh, perform these skill tests relevant to the sport. So suppose I had rugby. In rugby, I would perform skill tests such as moving really quickly from left to right or um, sprints and jogs and stuff like that, stuff related to the sport itself. There's no point checking um, if you can you know, uh, do something completely irrelevant to the sport if he's going to go back to the field playing the exact same sport because that's just not going to really be testing the skills of the person. So some examples of skill tests include you know, standing, walking, t uh, jogging, sprinting, uh, catching, throwing, ch uh, you know, just changing direction as well as jumping. And while, while they do this, you want to make sure you look for signs of discomfort. Now, this is pretty much everything. This is the, the full overview of toe taps. And it's, it's everything you actually need to answer any questions related to toe taps. But there's one thing I want to make clear. You need to have examples and you need to make sure that you provide a, a thorough overview. Um, I, I, in the beginning, I kind of forgot to mention this, but toe taps is used when an injury has been classified as non-life-threatening and is serious enough to require a more uh, detailed assessment. Toe taps should be should be followed. So, um, it's. Yeah, it's just basically in any sport which which needs some sort of assessment to make sure that the person can go back onto the field, um, but at the same time, the injury isn't that life-threatening. Um, that's pretty much it, and. Actually, by finishing this video, you have finished critical question one. So critical question one is now complete, and we'll move on to critical question two uh, in the next video. Thanks for watching.